I'd like to demonstrate how to use Gibbs minimization reactors within Promax. Here on the left in our shapes list, you'll see that there is a reactors section, and we have these different shapes for you to choose from. And then when modeling these reactors, there's a few different ways that we can handle uh, the reactions that we expect. The Gibbs minimization method is really the simplest method in the cases where it can be used. And what the Gibbs minimization method allows us to do is we are essentially ignoring the kinetics of our reaction and even ignoring the actual reaction paths. And instead, we're just taking our known reactants, telling Promax what possible products could form, and allowing Promax to minimize the Gibbs free en energy for those reactants and products, which would be our equilibrium point at the end of all the possible reactions. And so that's the beauty of this Gibbs minimization idea. Now there's two things to keep in mind. First is that in our environment component list, we do need to specify all of our reactants as well as all the possible products that we are concerned about in our reactions. And so if I open up my acid gas stream here in this example, we'll see that it contains methane, CO2, and H2S, etc. But we've listed a lot more components here, including things like our sulfurs that are going to form, our SO2, components that are not found in the inlets, but are possible products in our simulation. The second thing to take into account when using Gibbs minimization is the fact that not all components are going to be reactive at a given temperature and not all reactions or reactants are going to go to equilibrium and so we need a way when we do these models to account for any constraints that we might have or any components that are not reactive. As an example I'm going to open up my Klaus bed number one here and when I open up that reactor and come to the process data tab under the specifications you'll see the very first thing that's been chosen is this Gibbs minimization type reactor. As soon as I choose that type of reactor, Promax will ask me to choose a Gibbs set. And these Gibbs sets are just pre-configured reactors for common applications of this Gibbs minimization method. So if I look at the drop-down, you'll see that most of our sulfur recovery units are already uh, set up within this list. So things like our condensers, Klaus beds, acid gas burner, etc., can be found in this list. And when you choose the correct Gibbs set, Promax will automatically create the known constraints for that type of reactor and already select which components are reactive at that point. Now, continuing just here in our reactor, I'll also note that there is a pressure drop specified and then further down a bypass fraction as well. And this bypass fraction represents how much of our reactants essentially go throughout the, through the reactor without reacting. And so a 5% bypass fraction would be about the same as a 95% equilibrium conversion. Now let's take a look at the constraints that have been built for us. When I come here to this constraints section, you'll see two constraints that were pre-built. And again, these were predefined when I chose that specific GPSA hydrolyzing Klaus bed for my Gibbs set. These two constraints are controlling how much COS and CS2 are reacted back into H2S, and these are based off these common GPSA correlations. And I do again want to emphasize that these were pre-built for me, and so I, I don't usually need to come in and edit these constraints. If you do want to add constraints, there's this add option with these different common correlations. Other constraints you can add like quench temperatures, etc. But in most cases, this is already good enough and set up for you. I'm going to now come over to the components section here. We'll see here that in the reactive column, only some components are selected. Once again, when I chose my Gibbs set, Promax automatically decided which components are reactive for this set. And so for a Klaus bed, we expect H2S and SO2 to be reactive, forming our sulfur components. But we don't expect any hydrocarbons to be reactive or anything like that. And so once again, 
this component list is already chosen for me when I choose my Gibbs set. Now I do want to mention that these Gibbs minimization reactors can be used for other applications as well. If you're trying to use this reactor for another application and it doesn't have a predefined Gibbs set, what you can do is just leave it at the default Gibbs set, so the general Gibbs set, and then you would come into this tab and you would choose manually which components are reactive in your case. And so that way you have your own control, you can choose which components are reactive, you could go back and make your own constraints as well, and that would allow you to use this Gibbs minimization reactor for other applications. And so that's all the parts here of our Gibbs minimization reactor. As mentioned, there's different sets for all the pieces of our sulfur unit. If I come here to my second flow sheet, you'll see a list of the different Gibbs sets that we have available, along with which components are reactive, what constraints are already built for those sets, and common bypass fractions for each of these units. Okay, and so this Gibbs minimization is very powerful and allows us to handle these types of reactors. I do hope this video has been of use for you. If there's ever anything we can do to help, don't hesitate to give us a call. Our number is 979-776-5220, or you can email us at support at bre.com. Thank you.